Dude, I am telling you, the PlayStation 5 is so amazing. It's got the nice, sleek, gloss black inside. The curves are beautiful. The graphics just look so great. All right, you're my brother. But I want, I want to be honest with you. It's ugly, man. Uh, I, I, mean, I guess the white doesn't look that great. It's kind of weird looking, but... but look, look, at the, look at the Xbox Series X. It, it, it's small, square, black. It fits in on the entertainment stand. That thing looks like a sushi platter under your TV. Hey, Corey. Look. I fixed it. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Boy! Wait a minute. Look at it. Red. 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 Yeah. Red. <laughs> Welcome back to Beards, Bourbon, and Games. Today, we're in the flesh with the PS5, some rattle cans, and your co-host Big Jim, Mike, and Conquer Corey. That's right, all three together. As you've seen, they've unboxed the PS5, and she's big. But another thing is, she's kind of bland. And that white, well it just clashes with our taste here at the cave of beer bourbons and games and you know my dear brother Mike is the biggest PlayStation fanboy and if you also know him he wants it all red all of it feels faster that way I agree five extra horsepower right out of the box just woo so we got some good old did you do rattle cans from Walmart or wherever you can go to the shed, grandpa shed, and get one. And we're gonna just we'll have this brand new PS5. Catch it out. We're gonna skip over the first step, taking these plates off. Mike has the pleasure of maybe breaking his PlayStation because it's his toy and he gets to break it. <laughs> then we'll move over into the lab and we'll show you how to lay on some nice coats. So you at your own risk can do this at home if you want to. We don't advise it. Maybe real dumb. And it's gonna blow her up. We're not sure. But it's worth a try. Well, we're back in the workshop. Me and Corey's gonna be painting these bad boys up. Mike's main in the camera. Thank you, Mike. He did his part by removing the plates and how he did that is as you'll see in these corners, there's two round indentations. You're gonna just gently pry those till they release from their hole, and she just drops right out of there. Um, when it comes to painting surfaces or painting anything really, you wanna know what you're painting, the actual material. Is it metal, is it wood? If it's plastic, what kind of plastic if you can, if you can find out? And luckily for us, I believe Sony wanted us to paint these. Because they let us know right off the bat that these bad boys are made of ABS. And that's a really nice plastic. Really easy to paint. Um, very sturdy, very strong, and heat resistant. Doesn't shrink or swell much due to temperature change. Um, next thing you need to do is the most important of a paint job, in my opinion, is preparation. Preparation is key. Uh, if you've seen our, our PC build that we did for my sister-in-law, go check it out where we made her tower purple. Um, and that turned out very beautiful. I believe it was a glacier, um, a great glacier purple, some kind of name like that. And we used, uh, we used a Crylon Fusion for that. And today we're gonna be using a Crylon Color Max uh, paint and primer. The main things you want to, when you're picking out your paint, is what surface it's for. And all the information you need is going to be right on the back. What materials is it good for? The applications. How much heat can this paint withstand? Um, and, and just general instructions and what it's good for. Spray outdoors or well ventilated area. Our shop is well ventilated, but make sure you take that into con um, consideration whenever you're painting yours. Also, preparation. Um, if you've seen in that video, we had to mask a lot of areas off that PC case uh, before we started painting, but 
not so much with the PlayStation. Um, she gave us just pretty much a blank canvas. We're only going to try our best to paint this. Um, if there's a little bit of overspray <coughs> that comes into the center, uh, we'll wipe whatever's loose off. Of course, you'll see that later. But outside of that, we're not going to paint the full inside just because it's not necessary. It'll be covered up. And there's no reason to. But this outside, she's going to be easy. So first thing, let's prep our surface. We just need a couple paper towels. Good glass cleaner, um, whether it's aerosol or in a spray bottle like this, um, it, it's perfect for prepping for paint. Just any loose dirt, oil from your hands. I also suggest um, if, if your hands are dirty, wash them before you start painting. Crap. Mmm, Windex. We're working with new material here, so you don't have to worry about any kind of loose material or anything like that. Beautiful. And she's actually got, it, you can't hang a fingernail or anything in it, but she's actually got a scrape across the top here. From something, How, maybe that, that packaging, I don't know, from the factory, but she, you can, you couldn't tell it on camera. I bet. The only reason I saw it's because I got the I'm looking for the surface and the glare. We're looking at you, Sony. You and your egg cart and packaging. This wouldn't happen if it was Xbox. Just saying. Just saying. There we go, I said it. I'm happy now. Stay hydrated. The key is to get this good and mixed up. If you want to mix on that a little bit, we'll go in and we'll go ahead and talk about our clear. When you're picking a clear, the important things are to remember, one, your surface. And that sounds silly because, well, my surface and my clear is going to be paint. Well, yes, but your your different clears will attach differently um, to the surface, like a lacquer is really good for wood. Another thing to take is what kind of clear are we dealing with? Clear, clear, matte clear, frosted clear, opaque all these different and this is a triple thick crystal clear glaze might picture his playstation bright glass like coating super high gloss finish brave brave your stuff brave gloss Ranger print magnet if it's kind of cool where you're at you can run your paint or if you're using a used can run your paint under a little warm water especially your nozzle that help get her going Mm, she sounds good and loose. Spray somewhere once again, it's well ventilated. And uh, plan for overspray. Wow. <laughs> High quality material right there. Better be glad we're not reviewing you, crap. That's red, boys. You ready, Mike? Ooh. She smells like cherries. I'm sure that's part of it. And the reason I'm starting on the back here is because whenever we're painting that overspray on the, or like when you spray on this surface, you're naturally just gonna get overspray on the cupped edge. And when we paint the finished edge, you won't see it on the other side. We'll go ahead and we'll let that harden up a little bit. We'll make, move on to this bad boy. And the key is get a good wet coat down and do multiple coats. Multiple coats is key. We're kind of going to go ahead and tack some of these different edges. As you see, that lip there wasn't coated. 
And also you got different letters in here that needs different angles. You got your squares and your Sony over here and you see this slip. Sure will it probably paint when we paint the other side. Yeah, but go ahead and take the time and get in there. Get after it. This is laying on well. Laying on real well. Now, also your can's very helpful. It's gonna give you a couple of times. It's gonna give you a complete dry, your easy to touch dry. And it sometimes gives you advice when to use your clear, but also read your clear. Your clear might say it wants to spray on tacky paint. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Well, that was about 10 minutes. Let's go to a second coat. So, which again, you gotta shake her up good. As you can tell, this coat took on really well. There's some like funny stuff going on with like the molding here. That's not the paint. Well, when it's all matte textured white, you kind of don't see that until you start putting a, like a high sheen layer on it. Which has me semi nervous for the other side considering we're using like a high gloss instead of a matte clear or a satin clear. Um, Mike's always kind of like the shiny pretty stuff. I've always really liked that matte or that uh, satin look. Always test off your piece. Make sure there's no clumping, any irregular streams. And if there is, contact your doctor. Second coat, you can kind of come in lighter with it. I like light coats, um, especially working with plastics. We need to make sure we're getting in that emblem all right, but not enough to make it bleed through to that other side. This is looking beautiful. Light coats. If you, if you ask me, would I rather have three thick coats or a thousand thin coats of paint? If it's me, I'm gonna go a thousand every time. Now is that overboard? Yeah. Another big key to painting is to know when to just sit her down, walk away. See you in 10 minutes. Well, another 10 minutes passed. Let's take a look at this coat here. We're going to be uh, oh so ginger. Looks like half the prom dress is ready. Wow, you can actually see the... the triangles and circles and squares now so well, only one thing to do break on to, to the other side break on to, to the other side this is how it is This is where you can really see it's going to take a couple of coats. There's a groundhog out back. I'm just going to, he's going to come in the shop on us. She's gonna take a couple coats. You don't wanna put it on there too thick. You can see that white peeking through, but like I said, this side might take four coats. We'll see you in 10. So, we're about to put on coat number four, I think, on the outside. Um, this should be our last coat. Siding stuff, folks. 
We've been doing 10 minute intervals. Woo. I like to differentiate my pattern when I can. Just to ensure a good even coating. Tell she's a little thin here and here. <clears throat> now that you don't really want to focus in where it's thin, because then you'll get runs and pulls, um, or real bad orange peel. I just like that. Just means you got another coat you got to do. We'll go a little heavy on this coat. That's our last one before we go to clear. Bing bong. We'll see you back. All right, so we got our red down. Now we're gonna try some of this crystal thick, triple thick, clear glaze, oh, 500 brought glass like coating that Mike got. Once again, we're gonna try these on the inside. So. That. Sprays. Well, I be dog. This smells a little different than uh, paint. <laughs> Dang, son. Sure enough, though, look at that. That's like glass. <laughs> Making that pop. This is going to be uh, interesting. We might just need one quote. One quote. <laughs> we <laughs> might just need one quote of this. Um, we're going to come back in like. I don't know. We're gonna wait and let it dry. See you in a minute. How about some uh, clear? Clear cut. Yeah, more glaze. So we glaze the bottom side. Uh, we'd show you, but they do pick up. Uh, uh, we touch the part that doesn't show. There we go. Words. And it does leave a fingerprint for up to 24 hours. So we're gonna put on a wet coat and then a lock coat after two minutes. And then we're. Um, we should be good. Good catch. <laughs> one of us with hair dropped one. Okay. Oh! I'm unfamiliar. I'm not... I've used glaze. Not a whole lot, though. It's just the wetter, the better. Which... Which is cool by me, you know what I mean? <laughs> She's got a really weird spray pattern to her. I'm not sure about it. That other side looks beautiful. Okay, from this side, uh, that looks sick. You just want to put enough coats on there that he's not going to be able to fit a disc through it.
They say a wet coat. I don't want to put it on there too thick, but when a rattle can tells you wet, they mean it. So we got to let it dry for two minutes. Then we'll, uh, we got to put another coat on it. Yep, wet coat's down, been down two minutes, time for a lock coat. And then she's done, but we do have to wait 24 hours or it'll pick up all our little fingerprints and that's incriminating. So Mark, you ready for the last coat? Let's do this. Everybody spit on it. <laughs> See that glaze just kind of lay on her. This is like a legit glaze in a can. Um, no non-firing glaze. That's wild. Good stuff. Well, that's the last coat. Mike, roll that beautiful, beautiful bean footage. <laughs> Don't say you're on the road